program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars. Investigator theater hold up in shooting at the Forum Theater. That's all. Rose and Chris. <laughs> quantity of any ordinary, inferior grade of corn fails to pop. And you not only miss the pleasure of eating this delightful confection, but the unpopped grains get in the way of your enjoying those which do pop. This illustrates with particular clarity the disadvantages of ordinary sluggish gasoline. Only part of it burns. The rest gets in the way, so to speak, like the unpopped grains of corn. It flows down your cylinder wall, diluting the crankpiece oil or is discharged from your exhaust raw. Naturally, if less than all of a gallon of gasoline burns, it takes more gallons to drive each hundred miles. Rio Grande cracked gasoline may be compared to the choice of electric grades of popcorn which pops. It burns. This is why you get quicker starting, more power, greater mileage. Los Angeles, Oakland, Maricopa County, Arizona, and many, many other cities and counties use Rio Grande cracked gasoline exclusively. And now, with the beginning of 1937, Pasadena, Phoenix, and Marysville, three of the most distinctive cities in the West, have started using it. Already, Rio Grande Crack Gasoline was powering more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment wherever it was sold than any other brand. Why don't you try Rio Grande Crack Gasoline in your car? See your independent Rio Grande dealer tomorrow. Again, we present Deputy Chief H. S. Seeger of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Seeger. Good evening, friends. Tonight you will hear a story that gives a very clear picture of the close cooperation of all departments of our police. The fine detective work done by officers assigned to the case made it possible to lay a trap that proved fatal for the criminals sought by them. When nothing more than a vague description of one man and an equally vague description of the car thought to be driven by him Detectives under the supervision of Captain McCaleb in charge of the Wilshire Division followed endless leads and eventually reached their objectives. It is this type of story that makes us realize the undeniable truth in the statement that crime does not pay. November 1933. A cold, bleak day made colder by an offshore wind blowing in from the San Diego Harbor to penetrate the squat barracks of the Marine base. Busily engaged in the business of watching his uniform, six-foot Marine John Bice expresses his contempt for the Navy in the time-worn way. Marine, oh, 10,000 jobs lay down this swap to lick one six Marine. Oh, 10,000 jobs lay down this swap to lick one six Marine. Oh, nuts. What's the matter, Marine? Going to happen it out with the old man again? Yeah. You two are getting to be regular pals, communing with each other every day. What's the trouble this time? I'm a disgrace to the Marine Corps. I'm not fit to wear the uniform made something or other by the blood of the brave men who went before me. I'm... Uh, every time I hear that old sourpuss lay it on, I want to push his face in. Why don't you? Yeah. Why don't I? Why don't you? Why don't about a million other guys who feel the same way? Because if they did, they'd land in the brig for life. Yeah, that's what I figured. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm not going to take any more of it. How come? How would you like to be in the city right now? Making whoopee with some hot little gal or drinking some rot gut in one of those swell joints I know. How'd you like that? <laughs> what do you think? I think we could be. Yeah? Yeah. And I'm not screwy either, so don't get that look on your pants. Suppose you sort of break down and tell this Marine how you're going to accomplish all this. You know, give me a clue. I'm going to skip this whole rotten outfit. Dessert. You mean just uh, walk out? I mean what I said. Dessert. Go A-W-O-L. Anything else you want to call it. What happens when you come back? I don't come back. Oh, you don't come back. That is, unless an MP gets a load of you wandering around, picks you up. You'll come back then. Listen. 
I'm not in the mood to sit here and argue with you. I say I'm getting out, and I say I won't be back. If you don't want to come with me, you don't have to. Oh, I'll come with you, all right. Meant to all the time. I just like to hear you get sore. It pleases me. <laughs> Yes, sir. Have a copy of this sent to the police with an inspection to forward to all cities. Line of organization, John K. Vice and Leland Johnson. Description as follows. Both well built, heavy set, six feet, Johnson age 20, Vice 21. Both appear older. If found, hold and return to Marine Base Military Police, San Diego. That's all. Yes, sir. <laughs> Now, what do you think? This is better than messing around that lousy marine base? Yeah, this is plenty all right. Now, what we got to do is find some babes who want to have a little sport and we're off to the races. And from the looks of this place, we won't have any trouble along those lines. How's the door hold now? Well, I got over half my pay right here in the old pants pocket. Okay, sonny boy. Let's have a couple and get underway. It begins to look like a swell cruise. <laughs> Look, I got a way for us to make some real dough, Johnny, and we don't have to work to get it. 
Oh, uh, you're drunk again. There is no such I'm thing. I'm stone sober, and I got a swell idea. Will you go in with me? I don't know. What's the plan? It's apt to be a little dangerous. So what? Okay. Here's the whole thing. It struck me when I was talking to May tonight. Like a November 10th, 10 5 at night, in front of the cashier's window at a small San Diego neighborhood theater. What time is the second show over? 10.30. In 25 minutes. Well, it's fine. Now, listen, sister. Take this money bag and shove every bit of dough you got in it. Don't let a peep out of you. I'll blast you with this gun, you understand? Yes, sir. Well, don't make any funny moves either if you want to stay healthy. Oh, yes. Okay. Is that all you've got? Yes, sir. Okay, sister. Shove it back to me and sit tight for 10 minutes, and I mean it. Highway and keep going. You got enough to get up to LA, and there's less chance of being spotted there by the MP. You think that dame got a look at you? I don't. And if she did, so what? Yeah, that's what I say. So what? November 12th, in front of a Los Angeles theater. Hello, sister. How many, please? I'm sorry. Please, please don't point that gun at me. Please. Take it easy, sister. You won't get hurt. Just do what I say, and that's natural. Well, I'll try. Yes. Take this bag and shove all the paper money in first and make it fast and quiet, have Yeah. Yeah. There, baby. Okay, we can skip the tank. Thank you. If you make one move after I'm gone, it's curtain. Oh, I, I won't. Honest. Good. Hello, sister. Hello. In one week, 12 theaters lose their nice receipts to the fast-moving Marines. Several small theaters in the area between Long Beach and Los Angeles experienced a sudden nerve-wracking visit. And as a result of the alarming number of reports coming, Captain McCaleb, heading the Wilshire Police Division, calls in Lieutenant Cromwell in the cray. You sent for us, Captain? Yes. Yeah. I've got a job for you two. Good. We each got to be put on these theater robberies. There were two more pulled in this district last night. Yeah, I noticed the report. Well, I got 15 just like it here on my desk, and I don't want any more. I'm putting you boys on it, and I don't care how you go about tracking it. But one way or the other, find out who's doing them and bring them in. All right, that's right down our alley, huh, Stormwell? Sure. All right. It's all yours, boys, and I don't envy you. That's all. Hoping to get a description of the wanted men, Stormwell and McRae lose no time in driving to the theaters mentioned in the robbery report. Interrogating the cashiers. He had a cap on, so I couldn't see much of his face, but I think if I ever saw him again, I'd know him, and he was just, just, well. You kept calling me sister. You made me so mad, I'd like to have slapped him one. Only I didn't dare on account of he had a gun in my face the whole time. Yes, I got a very good look at him. He was pretty tall, heavy set, and he wore a gray overcoat. He had a, a gray cap on, but it fell off when he bumped against the window trying to get the shots out. I'd know him if I ever saw him again. Well, did you notice anyone else waiting for him? A car or another man? Yes, sir. When he left, he ran out and jumped in the car that was parked at the curb. It was uh, an Oldsmobile, I think. An Oldsmobile coat. Sort of gray color. Mm -hmm. Did you see who was driving it? Oh, man, that's about all I was able to notice. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, miss. Come on, Max. We'll get a flash on that car and see if we can pick them up that way. <laughs> Police calling all cars, attention all cars. Get on the lookout for a gray Oldsmobile coat. Two men thought to be using it in theater robbery. They're armed, so be careful. That's all. Hey, give me one of those, kid. Publicity's okay for certain things, like pickaxes, for instance. But 
Maybe it ain't so good for us. I don't know what you're talking about. Doesn't it say right here in the paper that we got the law baffled? Yeah, it says that all right. Well, what are you worried about? We're fat. Yeah. We go tonight, Lee? Sure. I think we'll take that little boulevard theater we looked over last week. It's a pushover. Yeah. You know, Lee, I'd sure like to do a little party on one of these nights. We ain't been anywhere for weeks. There'll be plenty of time for that later. Right now, we got things to do. Dough to make. I know. Only I was thinking. Before, we didn't have any dough, but we had fun. And now we got dough and never do nothing. Hey, you're not backing down on me, are you? What? Me backing down? I should say not. Because if I thought you were... And Lee, I'm sorry I even mentioned anything. Let's drop the whole thing, huh? Okay. Only any time you want to walk out, well, I'm not stopping you. You know that. Sure, I know it, Lee. But I wouldn't walk out on you. Ernest. Good. Get on your clothes and let's go look that theater over. We got to figure a spot for you to park at. No more weight in front. It's getting too hot. Yeah, maybe you're right at that. I'll be with you in a second. As soon as I get the ladder off my face and pile into some dust. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. I'll be back in a minute. Keep going. Good luck. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Huh? Uh, peekaboo! Yeah? Uh, roll down the window. i got to ask you something. Beat it. All oh, right, now, now. Roll down the window. It's important. I told you to beat it. Now go on, scram. All right, sir. If you won't roll down the window, I'll have to shove in. Now, look. I said go away, and I mean it. Go away. All right, listen. Give me a match. I, I'm going to light a cigarette. If I give you a match, will you go away? I'll give you a match, and I'll, I'll go away. Okay. Here's a match. Yeah. Now beat it. Hey, what do you know? Your motor's running. Uh, what do you want your, your motor running for? Turn it off. That's all right. I know it's running. You just run along, and I'll worry about the motor. All right, 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 now, let me, let me shut off the water. Yeah, hey, listen, mister. Uh, You're about to get hurt if you don't uh, leave I'm telling you. Now, now, there's no sense in having the boat ready if the car standing still. Now, tell me that now. Just tell me if there's any sense or if there's any... Or, uh, hey, who's this? Is somebody else want a bat? What is it? It's all right, Lee. Pile in. This guy's a little drunk. Okay, you're out of the way. Now, now, wait, wait a minute. What's the idea? Get out of the way. Okay, Johnny, get moving. Say... That's the silliest thing I've ever heard of in my whole life. Leaving a motor running like that. The fellow must be nice or something. That's what is just plain drunk. And in the Wilshire Division Police Station. I'll get it. Where's the police station? Hey, this is the manager of the Boulevard Theater. I just been robbed. Yeah? Well, hold everything and I'll get out there right away. Oh, did you get a description of the bandit? Uh, I did, but you have to talk to him. He's scared to open your eyes. All right. We'll be out in five minutes. And once at the theater, Stormwell and McCray managed to quiet the hysterical cashier, extract a description of the bandit from her, which checks with descriptions given by all the other theaters. It is evident that the same man is responsible for the recent crime wave. And a little later, after reporting the affair to Captain McCaleb, the three hold a council of war. We know what kind of a car they use, and we have a description of one of them. And yet they manage to pull jobs right and left and walk away. Something's got to be done about it, and soon. Well, we've done everything we could possibly think of, Captain. <laughs> so far, I'll have to admit we're completely in the dark. Have you any ideas about it? What would you think about taking out every theater in a certain area? It might work. Whoever's doing the jobs has been hitting almost by clockwork. And they pull the jobs at about the same time of night, a little after 10. That's right. Now, I figured on having two men in every theater and have some prearranged signal with the cashier that would let them know if anything was wrong. That'd take more men than there are in plain clothes. Well, we could use radio officers, assign them to special duty. Yeah, that's right. Well, what do you think about it? Well, I say it's a good idea. All right, we'll do it. I'll issue special orders and line up as many men as I can. I'll check back with you and we'll work the plans out. In the meantime, you and McCray be thinking about a set of signals. All right. And two 
night later, with plans completed, 40 plain clothes men tear off into teams, stake out in 20 Los Angeles theaters with orders to shoot if necessary to capture the bandits. And in radio cars cruising all through the district, policemen keep a sharp ear tuned to their receiving set. Ready to speed to any location the minute the call comes in as the suspect has been seen. It is shortly after 10 o'clock in the lobby of the Forum Theater on Pico Street. Inside, hundreds of picture fans watch with open mouths as a current gangster picture draws to a blood-stained finish. Just inside the main doors, from a vantage point where they can see the cashier's cage in the front foyer, officers James Heath and C.C. Jackson watch the girl for a sign that will send them into action. They converse in low tones. Are you sure if he got that signal straight? I hope so. I explained very carefully. If anything happens, he used to take the price sign down. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. It's not that anything will happen. That'd be too lucky for us. Can you imagine the headlines? Special officers Heath and Jackson capture mysterious bandit or... Uh, Box office burglar beaten by booze. Yeah, or maybe something like bandit blasted by bullet. Boy, is that something? <laughs> it is, but what, I'll never know. Hey, look, the girl's leaving her cage and coming back here. I don't see anyone around. Wait a minute. Oh, officer, it's almost closing time, and I'm going to lock up, so I thought I'd tell you about it before I took the sign down in case you might think it was a signal. Uh, how soon is the picture over? Oh, less than ten minutes now. Well, that's the sense no one would wait this late to call anything. Go ahead and lock up. All right, thanks. Well, Charlie, there goes our headlines. No soap. Yeah. Well, anyway, maybe we'll get another crack at them tomorrow night. Some of the other boys don't do the job tonight. Yeah. Well, we'll wait until the people come out and then take a party. You know, I could use some sleep about now. Here, too. Our tooth's been raising the devil with me the last couple of nights. Can't slept worth a darn. Hey, Charlie, look. Huh, that's funny. What? That girl said she was closed up. Look at her. Just standing there lifting that money bag up and up. Hey, there's a guy in front of her. What? Yeah, come on. All right, throw that gun away and... Let him have it, Charlie. Okay. Don't throw that gun away. Okay. Huh, so you thought you'd toot your way out. Is that right? Yeah. Get an ambulance, will you? I'm burning up. I'll ring for the wagon on the station, Jim. You better take a look through his pockets. Okay. You... You wouldn't have been so lucky if... My gun hadn't jammed. Maybe. Now, take it easy while I see what you got on you. Sure. It don't make no difference now, anyway. Ah, pretty well healed with money, ain't you? Yeah. What's this? This looks like a receipt. I don't know. Received sure. from John Vice for one week's rent, $16, 1752 West 50 present. Now, where you live? I'm just trying to find out. <laughs> got him, huh? Yeah, plenty. Did you get the other bird? Didn't see anyone else. Too busy with this one. I found a receipt on him, though. I think it's got his address on it. Let me see. Huh. Come on, Perry. Where to? West 51st Street. I got an idea we might surprise someone. There is the 5100 block. Must be right along here somewhere, eh? Yeah. Hey, look. Up ahead there. Just pulling up in front of that house. Yeah, I see it. Looks like an Oldsmobile, doesn't it? Yeah. It is. And that's our boy. Pull up beside him and be ready for trouble. Okay. Wait a minute, Joe. Huh? Where are you coming from? I, uh, Where's your pal? I don't know. This your car? Yeah. You just come in from the foreign theater, isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's too bad about your pal. Why? Why, he's lying on the sidewalk full of hot lead. Hey, you mean he's dead? Well, not yet, but it won't be long now. You're willing to talk? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, climb in our car. We're going to the station. So, due to the quick work of Lieutenant Perry and Jolin, and the accurate shooting of Jackson and Heath, Weiss is taken to the police station for questioning. And Johnson, seriously wounded, to Ward 110 of the General Hospital. And a little later, from his narrow cot, Johnson stares up at a circle of faces and makes a statement. I'm, I'm going to die, Doc. I'm afraid so, Johnson. And, and there ain't no use in, in lying, is there? No, not much. Okay. I, I pulled all those jobs the last six weeks. I did them all. Well, what did your pal Vice do, huh? We drove. That's all. I, I pulled a stick up. Oh. Have you got any of the money from those jobs hidden anywhere? 
He spent it all. Look what's on me. All right, Doc. Just one thing more. What was the idea of trying to shoot those officers at the theater, huh? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe because they was cops. Cops are like Marines. And I don't like Marines. <laughs> Johnson died in the jail ward on February the 4th after clearing up more than 60 theater robberies. And Vice, because he was only 20 and because he only drove the car, although an accomplice to the crimes, was given a term at Preston Reformatory and later released. An ironical twist came when Vice was tried, and it was discovered that not once in any of the holdups had any witness seen him. Had he denied the charges made by Dolan at the time of his arrest, when his partner died, he would have been released because of lack of evidence against him. Thank you, Chief Figure. Whenever you hear a siren, either on the air or in real life, keep in mind that Rio Grande Crack gasoline contributes more than any other brand to the police protection, fire protection, and public ambulance service for the people of California. And in Arizona, sheriff's officers who enforce the law for a third of the entire population rely on Rio Grande Cracked gasoline exclusively. Try Rio Grande Cracked gasoline in your car. It costs you no more to have police car performance. Begin tomorrow. Your car will start quicker and run smoother, too, if you will ask your independent Rio Grande dealer for Sinclair motor oil. Sinclair Pennsylvania or Sinclair Opaline. All wax and petroleum jelly have been removed. Sinclair motor oils are more highly refined than the water you drink. No matter how cold the weather, Sinclair motor oils flow freely. No matter how hot the weather, Sinclair motor oils stand up. Your Rio Grande dealer has the correct grade for your car. See him tomorrow. And ask him also for a copy of Calling All Cars News. It is brimful of pictures and stories about radio and screen celebrities, detective articles, and other special features. Get your copy of the January issue. It's free. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. A cancellation broadcast 165 regarding a theater holdup. Suspect in this case now in custody. That's all. Rolls and quits. Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company.